State management. It's probably the most talked about thing in the Flurry community. And to me, it's one of the worst terminologies that you will ever hear. The reason I think that is because if you have a word explaining multiple concepts, you will have questions asking for multiple concepts. So to understand this, we will start breaking it down a bit. Now what is state? And if you ask people, they will probably give you many different answers. The data, the variables in a stateful widget, any kind of variable that changes, dreams. And I think the best explanation given is by Matt, also known as super declarative, described state as the behavior of an app at a given moment. Now Matt has written an excellent article, which you can find here, where he goes deeper into the concepts. Now to understand state management in Flutter, the main thing you have to understand is that Flutter is a UI toolkit is how we can inject or push our information into the Flutter tree, which in this case would be to make the widget tree or the app display something new. The way this works is comparing the current widget tree with the other Flutter widget trees to check if there is a change to then rebuild. If you like these videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. And let's look at some more practical examples. So here we have a typical example. We simply display a homepage where we have a text widget with some value. Now, if we want this text to be updated on the screen, we can convert it to a stateful widget. And this you have probably seen, we would create a variable which would hold the state of that text. In this case, we could call it something like some text. Now, if we want this to be updated, we have to have some kind of event telling it to update. In this example, we're just going to use a floating action button with a unpressed callback. When this button is pressed, we're going to update that variable. An important part here is how we actually update a variable. When we're using a stateful widget, we actually get access to something called set state. Inside here, we can set that variable to some other text. Now, when this set state method is called, it will be marked as needing to be rebuilt. That means that everything inside this build method is going to be compared again as we explained earlier and it will see that some value has changed meaning that changed value will then be displayed. Now be aware that this is explained in very simple terms. Now this is most of the time fine but if we have an example of multiple widgets in a tree in this case we are going to create three stateless widgets which is going to be called child widget 1, child widget 2 and child widget 3. And the goal here is that we want to display that text in this child widget 3. So the normal approach to this is to create a variable and a constructor and then passing down that variable down in the constructors of the widgets. Now, depending on how deep you have to pass this variable, it can be quite cumbersome to actually manage. And as you can see here, taking some actual time to write. So fast forwarding this. Now the only thing we have to do is actually start using that child widget one and passing that variable some text. You can do this without a stateful widget as well, using something like change notifiers or value notifiers. So let's change these variables to use the value notifiers instead. So instead of a normal string, we will have a value notifier of the type string. Now we can use this value in the value notifier everywhere instead. So in the on press, instead of actually using set state, we just change the value of the value notifier. As we are now not using set state, we can actually change the stateful widget into a stateless widget. Now, if you remember set state, the set state actually marks the widget to be rebuilt. When we change the value for the value notifier, we will not mark the widget to be rebuilt. That is why, similar to streams, we can use a value listenable builder instead. This would take a listenable, in this case being our value notifier. And when the value of a value notifier changes, everything inside the builder will actually be rebuilt. So in this case, if we didn't use a value listenable builder, it would not trigger a rebuild, meaning the value would be changed but actually not shown. That is why sometimes you can see that if you hit save or a hot reload, you can see that value changes. Now we can go ahead and rename our variable to something like text notifier and the value that the builder from the value listenable builder actually gives is the actual value. So in this case, a string. And we will go ahead and rename that to some text 
as that was what we used before. Now this will behave the same way it did as a stateful widget. You would still of course have to pass the values down. Now Flutter has some built in ways to handle this and the main one being inherited widgets. Now you have probably used this before with things like theme and to see a full explanation of inherited widget I recommend this video from the Flutter team where they explain how inherited widget works. Now most of the times we don't make our own inherited widgets because there are a lot of different packages that we can use. The main one being provider which Google recommends which is an abstraction on the inherited widget, making it easier to use as well as implement. This will let us have a value which child widgets can reach up in the widget tree to get a hold of this value. And when this value changes, all the listeners will rebuild, making it so you don't have to pass anything down the constructors, meaning it will be a lot more cleaner to use. Now let's look at an example of this. First off we go to the pubspec yaml and add a provider package. Then we can go ahead and go to the main file and then refactor this to use provider instead. So what we are going to do is actually provide that value to all the child widgets. So we will go ahead and wrap the home page with a change notifier provider. This gives us access to actually pass that value notifier as a value to it. So to make this easy, we simply copy paste the value notifier we already had created. Now we are in essence saying that we can access this value anywhere below the home page. We can go ahead and remove the old value notifier and replace it with a context.watch, which will every time the value changes, rebuild this actual widget, meaning that when the value changes, we will see the change on the screen. And what a inherited widget does or provider is actually look up the widget tree for a specific type. That is why we specify the value notifier of type string. Now we can simply refactor out this value listenable builder as we don't need it anymore. We can just use the text coming from that context watch variable. And as in this case it's a value notifier, it will be text.value. Now this will work as expected, but the real actual benefit comes when we want to access it in a child widget. So let us scroll down to the child widget 3, which is actually responsible for displaying the actual text. We will paste the context.watch down here, and then displaying that value from the notifier. And what we can do by this change is actually remove all of the variables coming down from the constructor making it a lot more easy to actually manage where you don't have to pass so many values down the constructor line. Now of course we don't need to watch the value at the top anymore, we simply want to read it and change the value. The example itself isn't that amazing, but you can see the change here. Now you should have a solid understanding of how you can make your widgets rebuild with a new value, and this is what different state management packages actually does. So pick what you like and you feel productive with, and make some amazing apps. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to check out my Patreon for a bunch of different perks. Also, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and I will see you in the next one.